Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Learn GCP with Mahesh. So in our today's video in Think and Design and GCP video series, the question is something like this, a little longer question, so please bear with me the question. So your company got an opportunity to work on a project where strict data localization or uh, redundancy laws are going to be followed or considered. So this is just a search which I did it in the Google. So what is data localization and data redundancy? Basically uh, the meaning is the data has to be processed, uh, collected, processed and stored in the same country. Say for example you take any country or to just map it, uh, any region in GCP you have to make sure uh, if you are going to work for a customer who is in basically in say for example uh, India it has to be either processed in uh, Mumbai or it has to be processed in uh, Delhi. Uh, similarly, if the data, if the uh, customer is going to operate in London, the region has to be London. If the customer basically uh, is based in uh, US, specifically uh, East Coast or West Coast, basically you choose basically uh, US East regions or US West regions or if the customer is basically based in US Central region, Iowa is what you can use. Basically that is something what maps here. Now the team members who are part of this project, uh, now post-COVID everybody knows, everybody works remotely, uh, you'd have seen lots of ads where the companies who provides remote kind of a support, all those things, right? Uh, you can be from any part of the world, I can, you can still work in a project there, basically. So, in the similar ways, the team members are uh, are working from different parts of the world. Now, this project is going on smoothly. All of a sudden, customer raises a red flag, possibly indicating that there could be a data breach. Uh, the data is, they suspect, the data has been viewed from different parts of the country, uh, which is which should not be the case because they had a very strict data localization and redundancy loss basically in uh, into consideration and the product basically used the products and services which has been used here are Google Cloud Storage buckets, uh, data flow, BigQuery primary looks like a uh, data engineering related uh, project uh, so heavy transformation pipelines all those things is what uh, you have now you as a cloud architect uh, what is a product you can suspect folks and how do you fix it? So because as a data a cloud architect and a data engineer, we have done a good real work uh, saying that the Google Cloud storage bucket selected was standard uh, standard region storage bucket. BigQuery data set when we created it was basically a um, the specific region we had selected and data set was created. Data flow was provisioned in the same region which uh, where the customer belongs to. So uh, three products, we had not done any mistake, but customer is uh, suspecting something like this. What could be the possible product which is basically creating this issue? You can think of, uh, just pause the video, think about it. What could be the possible one? And do let me know in the comment section. As usual, I also have a possible product which can go little wrong and I wanted to show a demonstration on that part. So uh, pause the video, think about it and do let me know in the comment section. I wanted to show my possible solution. As usual, uh, may not be the best option but a possible solution. So let's look into the demonstration. All right. Uh, the possible product or the service which I suspect is Cloud Shell. Uh, why you will see the reason once we finish the demonstration. So uh, I have worked in various projects as a data engineer and uh, there are uh, situations where I have heavily used Cloud Shell. Uh, the data, sample data, I download it from Google Cloud Storage to my Cloud Shell, do some specific uh, pipeline sample set and then basically process in BigQuery. I have done this kind of a job basically. Um, now, when I was doing an implementation, this is what I realized. Looks like there is a data breach basically uh, with respect to the data. Maybe data breach is a very bigger term. Uh, basically data while uh, data residency or uh, residency or data localization is what could have happened wrong is what I suspected. To explain that, I wanted to show you a live demonstration. I have my Google workspace, uh, basically uh, uh, the page open. I'm going to add three users. So one user in uh, could be any part of Asia. One user could be any uh, can belong to any part of uh, Europe. One user can be any uh, belongs to any part of uh, America. So that's what I'm going to do, and I'm going to show you 
what is going to happen with that cloud shell progeny. So let me add the first user. I'm going to add the first user basically in US. So I'm going to call it as Mahesh uh, America. That's the name uh, of the user. So we'll just put a hyphen in front of uh, in between so that it looks good. Now Mahesh hyphen America is the user which I'm going to create in an organization called as learn GCP with Mahesh.com. So added the user. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this email ID and it's a brand new email ID. Everybody knows. Uh, now, what I will do is I'm going to uh, go into a GCP console and I'm going to use basically the tunnel bear uh, uh, browser client or extension and show you what is going to happen if I pretend as if that I'm coming from one part of America and where the cloud shell is going to get provision because the cloud shell is going to have a persistent disk of 5 GB. The data is going to be basically stored in that persistent disk and that persistent disk is going to be decided by the zone in which it is provisioned. So if the zone is totally in a different country, then we will have definitely the data localization or the residency issue. So let's look into it. I'm going to pause the video and switch it into a different screen. All right, we are in our GCP console. So here I'm going to use this tunnel bear. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use my incognito window and I'm going to basically turn my this thing uh, tunnel bear and I'm going to pretend as if like I'm coming from United States. That's it. So and turn it on. So that's the option which it is going to show. Now I'm going to use console.cloud.google.com so because I'm using a proxy it's going to be a little slow so uh, console.cloud.google.com I'm going to paste this click on next now let me get the password so I have the password let me hit next now when I do it it's going to understand up uh, yes I'm coming from US so that's the reason it's going to show basically a uh, US uh, country or the, the flag and it's going to have the number uh, unfortunately I don't have a US number so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my number and basically uh, authenticate so I'm just, just going to pause the video and enter my number and come back all right I've entered my uh, phone number and uh, basically the one-time password or OTP came now I'm good there so let me click on accept now, when I click on accept, the next screen which you are going to see is an important one which is going to decide where our cloud shell is going to get provision. So, let me just see, show you this. Let me basically change it. So, I'm going to give a password. So let's just wait for the prompt to show and the most important thing is the prompt which is going to show next. So and this is the first time we are doing it uh, and the first time when you do it this location is going to basically decide uh, that part. So let's just wait for this prompt. The prompt is basically welcome uh, then the country it is going to show. That's the most important thing. So you see this part. This is the most important thing folks which I feel can play a major role. Now, because I'm using the proxy tool, uh, it shows US United States. Now, let me click agree to the terms of the services. Done. Now, assume I'm a part of this project. I'm going to basically launch my cloud shell. Now, where do you think the cloud shell gets provision? So, the cloud shell is going to provision basically in one of the data centers in uh, US. Now, Two years back, I had created a video where it shows how to find out basically the zone of uh, the cloud shell. So I'm going to use the same thing uh, today to show you how it works basically. Uh, and I've also created a gist page on that. So I can share you that gist page and you can use that and run the script. So the cloud shell is provisioned. So let me increase the font for a better view. So clear the screen. So the just page which I mentioned, this is the code folks, uh, just a one-liner code. 
I'm just going to copy. Basically, I'm going to query the metadata uh, server of my virtual machine. In this case, my cloud shell. And if I enter it, it's going to show your cloud shell is in this project. This is my project number. Look at this, folks. US East 1. So basically, if I look into what is US East 1, basically it is uh, South Carolina is what it indicates. Now, uh, that's where my cloud shell has created. Now, what I will do is basically close this. Turn off my, uh, this thing, proxy tool, or change it to basically something like, mm, Switzerland. Okay, this is what I'm going to do, but I'm going to basically close the session and re-log in and just show you what is going to happen. So, uh, the first time which you create is what is going to matter is my understanding. So, I'm going to close this entire session and reopen it again. So, let me now, the, uh, the location is Switzerland. Let me basically go into an incognito mode console.cloud.com now no sign up and all we already have the username and the password we are just going to log in into it so let's wait for the prompt to come up and it may show basically in a different localization if i'm not wrong uh, so let's wait for the screen to come up so yes you see this uh, germany is what it shows uh, i'm not sure why it is showing germany uh, switzerland okay i don't want to get into that part I'm just going to enter it. So basically, this is the username, and the next screen is going to be the password. So let me enter the username. I don't remember the username. Let me copy it. So let me enter my user ID and the password which I changed recently. And let's wait for our uh, console to show. Now, this time it's not going to show any of those initial settings which we had seen uh acceptance uh, the terms and service exception and the uh, the country all those things will not pop up even though i have now logged in uh from switzerland it's not going to show me the this thing so once the screen comes up i will try to launch my cloud shell and i'll show you that the region or the zone which is going to show basically in our cloud shell is going to still remain as southeast one uh, south carolina is what it's going to show Let's just wait for the cloud or the console page to come up. And the only reason why you see it is little loading little slowly is only because of the uh, the proxy tool which I'm using. So let's just wait for the screen to come up. All right, uh, the screen is loaded and just wanted to verify it. It is the same email ID, uh, no changes. Let me launch my cloud shell from Switzerland and let's see what is going to be the impact here. So let's wait for this cloud shell to come up and you will see it is going to be still the same thing us uh, south carolina is what it's going to be let's just wait and again i see a serious latency uh, so let's wait for this to come up so, and i don't want to pause this piece of the uh, demo because uh, the continuity is going to be lost so let's just wait for it hopefully it came up nice so if i just do this the same command and do a echo I should see it is still US East 1 even though I am from the region. So it does not take the current region from where you have logged in. First time when you created the account it is going to basically show that the whole reason is Cloud Shell is basically attached to the Gmail ID of the user. It is not attached to the project, uh, any project the user works on. So it is basically attached to this account and this account when it was first accessing console.cloud.google.com had mentioned it is from us and because of which the zone is created in uh, us now let's assume the same thing uh, if this person works for a customer who is based in asia definitely uh, he may download certain stuff, basically a data engineer, right? So can download certain go sample data from Google Cloud Storage Bucket, write a pipeline in data flow and put it in basically uh, load the data into BigQuery. So knowingly and unknowingly, the person would have done this. Now, the breach or the violation which we see was not purposely done by the user, but 
they were not even aware of such a thing existed. So they are dif they are belonging to different parts of the world, and they are working in a project for a project where the customer is not in the same country where they are working. So because of which this issue comes into picture and. Uh, one option is basically because you get that 5 GB of persistent disk, you store the data and if you store this data, you are storing this data where? You are storing this data in this zone. Because it's a virtual machine, it's a zonal resource. The disk is also going to be in South Carolina only. So, US East 1. So, definitely the violation or the breach which uh, the customer suspected is already coming into picture. Now, what is the solution for this? We have already seen it in one of our video block the cloud shell that's it so block the cloud shell so you can look into the video uh, which i'll put it in the uh, this thing so you can block it now as a continuity part of it i'll just show you if you want to see basically how it can be done basically i'm going to search for shell i basically okay Cloud shell. Okay, sorry, it is going to something else. So let me just basically search for cloud shell. Cloud shell. For now, uh, to make it little simple, I'm going to just disallow this. So for everybody in the organization, cloud shell is going to be blocked. I'm back in the same user account, so I'm just going to close this. You can see it is the same user account. Now, when I launch it, basically, uh, it should basically get showing that a message that it has been disabled now this is the best option i have disabled it now then how will the uh, data engineer is going to work i'm going to create a bastion host basically if the customer is in a specific country in asia i'm going to create a virtual machine in that uh, zone particularly and let the developer wherever he be maybe uh, us uh, europe he can just log into this virtual machine use it and do anything if he wants basically so that's the possible suspected product which i felt cloud shell so the possible solution which i have is basically block the cloud shell uh, create a instance uh, as a bastion host in the region where the customer belongs to so if the customer belongs to basically um, say for example singapore create the instances in uh, create the instance the bastion host in singapore and we have already done a good job so Google Cloud Storage Bucket, Data Flow, BigQuery, all are provisioned in Singapore. Only this cloud shell was the one which was creating the issue. Now we have fixed that part. So do let me know uh, from your perspective what could be the possible product which could have been blocked basically. Uh, UI could be another product is what I would say console itself block it because the moment the console is open, uh, the user is going to open the Google Cloud Storage Bucket and go and download it to his laptop. So maybe even if we block the console is also a good choice. So shell is something which I thought. Console is another thing which I have thought. So do let me know what could be the other product. Or if you feel these are really the important product, then we are awesome. So uh, that's the video which I wanted to share today. Uh, thank you for watching.